agenda is going to be uh, agenda item number four, which is the unused land at Car Lane and Hoy Lane. Can we have a presentation, please, Jo? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. This application was referred to the Planning Committee in November to enable members to visit the site. It was also a qualified to find petition against this proposal. The Planning Commission refused last year and subsequent appeal dismissed the subsequent inquiry the construction of 62 homes on the site. This application is for a reduced scheme comprising 26 two story dwellings within the same per hedge. The application site is located to the most southern end of Car Lane, the north and west of the residential properties, beyond which is Car Lane Industrial Estate. The site, along the land of both the north east and south east and south west, is located within the North Green Belt and is predominantly open countryside. Both the National Planning Policy, Policy Framework and the Property Law Unitary Development Plan attach great importance to the retention of the Green Belt, which should be permanently open to check unrestricted school, to assist in safeguarding countryside and encroachment, and to assist in urban regeneration by encouraging resetting of various lands and other to other priority areas. Unitary Development Plan Policy G32 makes it clear that the general assumption against inappropriate development in the Green Belt and such developments will not be approved except in very special circumstances. In terms of the site itself, it's open in character and more akin to open countryside as noted by the inspector in his dismissing the previous appeal. This new proposal will still contribute to improve approximately 90 metres into the open countryside, covering a significant area of land which is still considered to be significant encroachment into the Green Belt, resulting in considerable harm to the character, appearance and openness openness of this Green Belt location. In terms of housing supply, the local authority records would indicate there are just under 6,000 empty properties within the borough, and Hoyland and Mells have a higher than average vacancy rate of 261 empty properties, including affordable homes, bringing these empty properties back into, back into use as a key corporate priority. With regards to appearance and amenity issues, the redevelopment is considered to be fairly standard in appearance and approach, and doesn't take an opportunity to improve the character and the quality of the area. The form built development along with its scale and extent of projection will be a problem and visual intrusive. This concurs with the inspector's view who stated the development will harm both the character and appearance of the area and the visual amenities of the Green Belt. This current application before members, while the reduction in the built form still extends 90 metres into the Green Belt and will still cause considerable harm to the character of the area. The inspector of the previous inquiry was very clear in stating that any benefit, including provision of any affordable housing, was not considered to be sufficient to outweigh the harm from inappropriate development in the Green Belt. The policy context has not changed since this decision, and the reduction in the number of units to 26 is not considered to outweigh local or national policy in relation to the Green Belt or the conclusions of the inspector in the last public inquiry. Except in the case of the need for housing in the Green Belt, we will lead to similar applications elsewhere and will undermine both urban regeneration and recycling of delicate land and other urban lands, which could lead to unsuitable patented developments which the authority is seeking to avoid. For these reasons, the proposal is recommended for approval for the attached reasons. Would the representative want to come forward? My name is Christine Babin and I have lived on the estate for five years. Is it time I moved on as you call? As a resident of Carr Lane, where I'm speaking on behalf of the people who actually live there on the ground level on the poverty line, we're very concerned what impact having a new estate would bring changes to our estate. As far as your development that we're discussing today, the fact being that um, obviously 26 affordable housing will bring 50 plus or more people to our area, including the traffic issues, which is cars, and also 
yeah, yeah, we have traffic problems already because of where the industrial estate is already, for example, of the lorries have squashed or bush stop four times, which doesn't seem much, but that gives you an idea of how dangerous it is already. And there's one road in and one road out to our area. Um, also, the train network rail, the train crossings are to be closed, and also this makes it difficult for traffic with the lines being down. Uh, up to 15 minutes and now the lines are short, the barriers are down. This is going to affect obviously emergency services getting to and from the people in Oslo who are elderly or disabled, which is also going to be quite difficult for them with the new um, bridge that's suggested getting their wheelchairs over. Um, obviously, with the new housing, it will bring families and children. Um, and we have basic things such as places for the children. No, we don't have that. Our bus service doesn't start till 9.30 a.m., which doesn't help the families that might move. The flood risk assessment. Uh, we read out the report, and um, that was wrong. Since 2012, we've had seven recorded floodings just on one road, which is George Road, where United Utilities will back this up. Obviously, the green belt land is full of wildlife, and protected plant life and um, you know, such as kestrels, hawks and pheasants and obviously the, the plant life which you, you know about because you've read it yourself. Um, also, we've just heard that there's already housing in our area which um, none of us have been offered but it's there, apparently. Um, we've had also a lot of problems before we go on to the antisocial behaviours issue. The actual area you're going to build on is higher than our estate, so we will also suffer from the floods, from the water running down into our estate. The antisocial behaviour we experienced on our estate for over 40 years, we're very poor down there, it's been bad enough, we're very worried about the impact it's going to have on the people who have lived there for a long time. There's families who have been in this area for 70 years, but all for change for the better, but we're very concerned it may well not turn out like that. And we all know there are no guarantees from said housing associations, including their policies on how they run their businesses as private companies or whatever. Um, so basically, as, as a community, we're very, very concerned about it, and we do not want it to go through. Um, I think my five minutes will be up for now. I'm very glad it is well as this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening.
the council's own schmar has identified the urgent need for affordable homes in Hoyle, equating to some 153 dwellings per annum, or 37 using the balanced housing market model. The reality is that at 4%, Hoyle has the lowest proportion of affordable homes in the borough. Hoyle in West Kirby is home to 24,700 people living in 11,600 dwellings. By any stretch of the imagination, the provision of 26 homes within this context can only be viewed as limited. Members have now had the opportunity to visit the site and will have seen that nearly half of the proposed development is in fact brownfield or previously developed land. And the balance of the site is in reality something of an eyesore. This proposal will not only provide some of the much needed affordable homes that all parties agree are urgently needed throughout the borough, but it will also landscape the balance of the site to sympathetically improve its visual appearance. Additionally, the design of the homes has already been acknowledged at the recent public inquiry as an appropriate form of development in terms of detailed design and layout. Moreover, despite extensive independent council surveys, there are no other identified sites in the area capable of meeting or delivering the need for new homes. The lack of such identified land is a significant material consideration. The granting of approval, therefore, will not be set into precedent, as all applications have to be judged on their individual merits. There are simply no comparable sites in Hobbit. Nor will the siting of the homes impinge on any aspiration that the council may have for the potential future use of adjoining areas. The council's wish for all new developments is that 40% of the homes should be affordable. The reality is that this has been economically impossible to achieve. This development, however, will provide a 100% windfall of such homes at no cost to the council. It can be started now and will provide much needed work for the skilled craftsmen in the area, as well as creating apprenticeships. It will also help in the retention of the bright and ambitious people who need to encourage to stay in the area so that we can all prosper. Taking into account all that I've just outlined, even if members believe the proposal to be inappropriate development, there can be no real doubt that the benefits far outweigh any perceived limited damage to the green belt and therefore constitute very special circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can we press that still button before we go to my side?
the uh, special nature of reason. Going on to the bottom of page 28, we have the uh, uh, comment on the applicant's case, where it says this about the food into the open countryside when measured from the residential boundary. The developed part of the site also covers significant areas. This would still be a significant encroachment in the region. And then, it's near the end of the following, the following paragraph, it is therefore considered that the proposed development would be built in a significant third of the depth of the built wall into the open countryside, and the extent of the encroachment of the wall would result in significant harm. On the following page, my comment on Greenfield Sound and what we need to satisfy uh, in order to uh, be allowed to build. And make it very clear that this site does not need to go to that test. What we need is that what we've got here is a site where we take it all the um, uh, plant committee where the plant committee said no, it doesn't meet the uh, uh, what is required to build on the use of the We went to appeal and the inspector found exactly the same. Uh, now, nothing in the inspector's report that I could find referred exactly to the number of houses. We were talking about the uh, whether the uh, number whether the house the proposal itself met the case with the fact that there had to be special circumstances in the amount that there were. And then if you read the opposite report, you have a report from the officer as well. Again, there are no special circumstances that could have recovered the value of the property. Uh, the, 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 the report itself refers to the full book of policies in the county to support that of the proposition. The report itself even indicates where you turn down applications for building of the site where the number of properties will be far, far away. And so, in terms of the number, that is not really as important as the importance of it, that is uh, the value of the importance of the interior site. Then I think that we have an effect on other areas in the world if this was to overcome the uh, objection that the officers have outlined tonight. Therefore, I would ask you to
you, Chair. Um, the Council's policy at this point in time, um, which this application must be considered against, is very clear. You know, we have green belts, the green belt should be, should be protected. Um, what might happen moving forward, uh, progressing the local development framework and core strategy, is something that um, the Council will need.